Welcome to GTI Spindle Technology. I, my name is Tom Honig. I'd like to go over our iPad Vibration Analyzer. I've done several other videos, uh, so I'd like to, since this is a computer image video, I put up a uh, little picture of what the analyzer looks like for folks that are seeing this video for the first time. Uh, it has a standard 100 mil per G uh, accelerometer from IMI. Uh, we've got an industrialized case to protect the unit. Looks much like many data collectors. It is a two-channel unit as well. Um, and what I'm going to be reviewing today is two brand new apps that are going to run the software on our new analyzer coming this year. And the two names of the apps are Vibe Trend and Vibe Pro. Let me go right to the screen where those reside. Now we've got Vibe Pro here and Vibe Trend. Now these two apps are very unique because they work uh, in sync with each other. And when I say in sync, um, when you take a reading like you do with most data collectors that you have to bring back to a computer and download into another software and do all your trending and your reports from a PC, this is all done seamlessly between the two apps in the background because we're using cloud computing. Uh, and Dropbox, which is the leader in cloud computing, to transmit our data from when we take it at the asset point, whether we're at a windmill or whether we're at a motor in a plant or a spindle, wherever we are, we're taking that reading and that data is immediately pushed to Dropbox so it can be received by any computer PC in the world that moment. And it also sends it in the background without you even knowing it to Vibe Trend so that the trending of that asset is done on site all the time the, the moment you take the reading of that asset. So let's open up Vibepro real quick here so we can get into the crux of what Vibepro is about. Now I have a 3600 RPM motor running behind me here so we're going to be able to see a spectrum right off the bat as soon as we open uh, uh, Vibepro. And I'm going to turn Vibepro on and as you see Immediately, I've got a spectrum on the screen. I'm in velocity to start. I just switched to acceleration so I can see a little more spectrum in the bearing area there. You can see pop up. And, you know, one of the beauties of this is you know, with the touch interface, I can pinch the screen in and out to see more of the, uh, the whole spectrum, which goes all the way out to 20K hertz or 1.2 million CPM. And I can simply toggle back to 1,000 hertz or back and forth by either pinching the screen or using the toggles right on the touch screen. Now you can see we're not using much of the real estate of this screen like much many other analyzers do, which is kind of a nuisance because until you get to a computer you really can't see things. Well with ours you just simply turn it sideways and you get the full spectrum and you can you know bring cursors up and move them around as you can see I can find running speed or I can hit an automatic cursor and it'll tell me right here you know what my running speed is and so forth so very beautiful elegant way of being able to navigate the screen and not have to download things on a PC to really look at things we also have here if you look a little picture of a bearing what that does is gives a pop-up screen to put our bearing geometry in and then a cursor will arise on the screen and tell you exactly where your bearing defect frequencies are so really takes the guesswork out of uh, analysis we do the same thing with RPM. If we hit the RPM marker, which is right now, as you can see, set at 3600 RPM, and this motor is running just short of 3600 RPM, and if we turn these other two cursors off and hit the RPM cursor right here, we can see, boom, it comes up right next to uh, where the running speed is, so we know we're running a little short of 3600. And if we hit the blue cursor, of course, it pops up on the top and tells us exactly where we are running at 3309 CPM. And now if I want to know multiples of that running speed, I just simply click on the button that toggles next to it that makes sense with the arrow, and I get the multiples of my running speed, so I can check that out as well. Very simple, very elegant, and user-friendly, which is the key here. Now, let's get into the meat and potatoes of this and where we get into Dropbox and using our report. Other analyzers, to get their reporting done, need to come back to a PC in an office and then that all has to be downloaded and know what machine you took measurements on. It goes kind of by a hierarchy. We simply do it as we go. So a route doesn't even have to be planned necessarily because if you see, I'm going to go to my reporting and as soon as I jump over to reports, I have my top frequencies, my overall, I still have my spectrum, 
I also have notes, so if I want to put in, you know, any special notes that are appropriate, uh, so forth and so on. Now, as soon as I hit this button, it also time stamped it, geo tagged it. It knows where I took the reading, when I took the reading. And this nice chart here is an ISO spec chart for pumps, motors, fans, spindles. I can hit the spindles and, and know where within ISO spec by this black line, whether I'm in the green, red, or I'm approaching an alert situation that I need to make a decision with my asset. Now up here, we use the camera function of our analyzer slash iPad, and we can actually take a picture of the asset and know where we took it and where the, in this case, the motor behind me. And then I can hit the use button, and it puts it right into my report. So now I know where I took the reading, I was in a horizontal position, so forth and so on, and that's what my asset looks like. Uh, really does a nice report job. So getting down to the Dropbox feature down here. So now I've taken this asset for the very first time. I click on the Dropbox and you can see I've got some other assets I already took readings of now. But say we want to start a new asset with this and call it uh, uh, Motor Red Test. Just so we can distinguish it from anything else I've put in there. Well now I've put that in there. Well now we want to know from the Motor Red Test, which we have right here, what where are we taking it? You know, what point? Are we in a horizontal position? So in this case, we're in an H1 position. We can add that as a hierarchy, if you will. And then we just simply tap on H1. So we're on motor red test, H1. And we simply hit this little upload data button. And immediately, I'm going to get a flashback saying, data has been successfully sent up to Dropbox. Perfect. I know it's been sent. I know it's there. And if you start to look on my computer screen, we're going to start seeing, so there they are, some pop-ups. It already went up to the cloud, and it's been sent down to my computer saying, hey, you have five new files. So that asset I've measured out on the floor has already gone to my boss or wherever it needs to go or an analyst. Uh, you know, it's all seamless. It also went to my iPhone. It went anywhere that I have that account uh, put on a device or a computer. So that's how it worked. Now in the background, all this happening without me knowing or having to do anything, all this information also went to Vibe Trend. So Vibe Trend is now keeping a trend of that asset. So let's bounce over to Vibe Trend real quick. You see Vibe Trend here on the screen. We just tap that app and immediately it pops up. And we're going to see that same list. And our motor red. Uh, isn't up there yet, so let's just refresh it real quick. We we'll just hit the refresh button and test motor red right here. Here it is, and there's H1. Now I can't see a trend, we only took one reading. There's no trend in one reading, but let's go to the one below it. The Setco spindle I took, I know at least three readings of. So let's hit the H1 position there and immediately look at that. We have a trend and the dates of when I took that data, what the amplitude was. And the last time I took the data, it's starting to approach a yellow uh, area, which if, you, if I pinch down, you can see I actually put, which can be done on any asset, I put a threshold marker of where I believe that um, asset to be coming into a critical area where something needs to be done. And you can see we're rapidly approaching that in this case. So this is just so easy to just tap on any one of your assets here in the list, and a list that's just infinite. And so when you're doing your route, your trending is already being done for you. This work is being done in the cloud by your geotag, by your overall uh, amplitudes, and it's all done seamlessly and automatically. Well, I hope this gives you a real good taste of what this is all about. I didn't name all the features because there's just too many to go over in a short tutorial, but uh, we believe this to be a real uh, grade setter here, that this is going to be uh, where analysis is going in the future because it, it really is no need to uh, have all these steps involved in a nuisance of bringing things back to another software where they all be done on the cloud.